Some are clapping and some are not clapping. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now, if you like, you can clap for the choristers. Hallelujah. Amen. Your life will be colorful. You will never regret serving the Lord. In the name of Jesus. We are going to be crying to God this morning to make our life a fertile ground that will grow the word of God. Hallelujah. If my life would be like a fertile ground, I don't want to be the, the sun now, but make my life like a fertile ground that will grow the word of God. It's a prayer point. That the word of God will grow in me. Through me, others will experience the hand of God. God, make my life like a fertile ground that will grow the word of God. Can we just lift up our voice as we pray that prayer? Because based on the scriptures, based on the songs, based on the praise, based on the worship, Lord, make my life like a fertile ground that will grow the word of God. All the days of my life, I stand, O oh God, to represent you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Quick, quick, if you have your Bible, we are going to God's own business. Lift it up above your head and say after me, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. The Word of God. Word of God. I am what it says I am. I, am I, I shall not die. I will live, I will live. to testify. To the goodness of the Lord, I will speak as I'm led by the Spirit. I will do all He wants me to do. And I will be who He wants me to be. And my life will never remain the same. If you believe that, shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. Praise God. I say praise God. Take your seat, take your seat, take your seat this morning by the special grace of God. We want to hear the word of God. It's our month of uh, change. The word that will cause changes in my life is what I need. And God created each and every one of us for a reason, for adventure. We may have missed the real calling of God in our life. God will take us to where he wants us to be. If you look at it, you count yourself worthy to be in a place where it is not only just, uh, not only just praise, we open the Bible again. Not only prophecy, we open the Bible again. The Bible will become your own compass that when nobody, you can read Bible and you can meditate on the word you are seeing or you are reading. Fortunately, many people don't want, they want it quick and quicker. They don't want to do what? To read the scripture again. The other time we, were, we discussed about changing from the worldly pattern. We look at that place. The fact is that many of us still bent on doing what the worldly people are still doing. We have not let go. We have not let go. We are still doing what we think my brother or my friends is doing that is making it a better do the same way. Living God instruction, living the commandment of God. The Bible says that the word of God is a lamb unto our feet. And if you can follow the word of God, you will never walk in darkness. Praise God. 
You will never do what? Walk in darkness. The word of God is a lamp unto my feet. Once you walk with the word of God, you will never stumble. You will never stumble. In case if you have been overlooking some of the word of God before now, take note of it. Try to walk according to the pattern laid down for us by Jesus. If we can be able to do that, it will be easy for us to communicate with God. And when we are communicating with God, we see light and we enjoy life. When we see light, we enjoy life. Praise God. By the special grace of God, where we stopped the other day because we were trying to rush to make it easy for us because of the meeting, I think we will start from there today. James chapter number one. Amen. James chapter number one, verse 13. It is we that take our hand to fall into the trap of the enemy. God can never want to put you into trouble that you don't want. It is you that want the trouble. That's why enemy now decide to use everything they have, every trick they have to run you down. Praise the Lord. If you look at it, it's very, very easy to blame others for whatever you are passing through. That is not right. If anything is happening, you don't sit down to think a way out. You will remain in the situation. If it is happening and you fail to sit down, meditate, how will I come out of this situation? You'll be blaming your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your friend. It is not so. You are the deciding factor of anything that happens to you. So you don't need to blame anybody. But some of us will like to blame somebody or find excuses for our wrongs. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our thoughts may put us into trouble. Our thought. From our thought actions are carried out. From our thought, actions are carried out. And that's where we begin to get some excuses. It is that man. It is this man. Praise the Lord. That man, that is, that is the reason I do it because I have no strength, because nobody come to my head. That's why I was messing up. James chapter 1 verse 13, the Bible said here, let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot tempt by evil. Are we there? Nor does he himself tempt anyone. God does not tempt by evil. God cannot tempt you by evil. Your father, seeing that you have no strength, asking you to jump down from up, and where you cannot be saved, no. Your earthly father cannot see, okay, this is a, a boiled oil. Go and put your hand inside. No, even if he see you trying to do it, you try to take your hand out of it. How much more the creator, how much more the man that know your words. Your father did not know your words. Your father did not see inside you. He just God gave him to you or gave you to, he, to make sure that he come through you does not mean he owns your life. He passed through you to, into this world but that does not mean that he knew everything about you. He's only God. He's only God that knows your lifespan, know your what, know where you're going, know when the ending is. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot tempt by evil, nor does he 
himself tempt anyone. Are we there? But each one is tempted when he's wet, when he's drawn away by his own desire and enticed. You can see now that it's even easy for us to cause a change, to make a change. Because when we are drawn away from everything because of our desire, it is even easy for us to say, no, I don't want again. So God It is you who will make your business to flourish. It is you who will do it. God take care of the spiritual. Why you will take care of the physical? Praise the Lord. God take care of what? The spiritual part of your life. That's why when you kneel down to pray, God answered your prayer, but God is not coming down to do it for you. I'm going to build a house. God is not going to build a house. If you take a step, God will finish the rest. God cannot take a step for you. You know what you want. Then you know how to communicate with God. Now, if you are doing wrong thing, it will be easy for you again to say, okay, these things are wrong that I am doing. Let me do what? Change. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. Remember, the desire, when it is conceived, what does it bring? Evil. Now, that's the next verse we're going to, verse 15. There is no way a desire we bring any good when it is not in line with the word of God. When it is not scripturally oriented, it is going to cause problem. You are too good? Yes, you are too good. But sometimes you check yourself, what people are saying you are too good at, is it really good? Is it really good? You have to sit down to evaluate yourself too. Verse 15, then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings what? Fought death. Though we better change. We better sit down. God is not coming down to do it. We must not blame God for all our wrongdoings. We must not blame God for our wrongdoings. Verse 16, the Bible says, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and come down from the Father of, of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. God said it, you believe it, you will have it. God is not a man and can never be a man. That's why the Bible says he created us in the likeness we cannot be God. In the likeness of his own image. God is too deep to understand. And once he says something, he has seen the end. So there is no, he cannot turn again. Look at the Bible, what the Bible, what the Bible said, praise the Lord. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and come down from the Father of light with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. No. He can't reverse his word and say, no, I didn't say it. I didn't give you a gift. 
He has given it to you. All you need to do is to maximize what God gave to you. Expand it. Let it begin to work. If you have left the real calling of God, the real mandate of God in your life, it is you again that will turn and say, God, I am very sorry. I've made a mistake. Let me no, retrieve my ways again. And God cannot be like me that will harbor evil, like me like, that will harbor evil. That will not have a second thought, go like zombie. God is faithful. And it's a compassionate God. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. That's God. And when they decide to do a thing, he cannot change. And no man will stop him. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Now, if you look at it, in your own action, you don't, you when you have made a mistake, you have made a mistake. Don't say it is Georgina that made me to do it. I have how many points here? Almost uh, eight points. You can't make excuses when you have a wrong thought. And that wrong thought will bring a wrong action. And these causes include what this call it excuses, causes what we call uh, John, it is John that made me to do this thing. Or Peter, because he speak, I was angry. Can you see? Those are the excuses we give when we have done wrong. You did not sit down to see what happens. One, if you look at it, all the excuses include here, it is the other person's fault. Number one. Number two, I couldn't help it. That's why I do it. Nobody can question me. I have to do what I got to do. Everybody, three, everybody is doing it. What happened when I do it? Is there any bad thing? Everybody, that person is doing it. Four, it's just a mistake of mine. I made a mistake. Are we there? Five, nobody is perfect. Leave me alone. Excuses, of flimsy excuses. Instead of turning 360 degrees back to God, we begin to give excuses. Six, devil made me to do all I, am, do, all I have done. Seven, I was, I was pressured into doing it. So, you see, excuses begin to grow more and more. I don't know I was doing wrong thing. I don't even know that those things I was doing was wrong. We talk of change. Changes cannot fall on you. You are the deciding factor of what happens next to your life. If you make a mistake, don't, don't uh, blame somebody because of it. All you need to do is to do what? To change. That is only what you need to do. Today, by the special grace of God, let your word descend for your people to be blessed. The power of change for today. The power of what? Of change. There is something that will cause, make God to visit you. And there is something you will do that will make God to change the rod that was set against you. That is when you have a genuine repentance. A genuine repentance. And the only way we can get this is from the word of God. Is from the word of God. If you can make God your source, you will change from inside. It's not going to be for outside. Because when you change from outside, when God's word is not involved, you will fall back into that sin again. You will fall back to the sin. 
Matthew chapter number 15. Matthew chapter number 15. Praise God. Verse 16. So Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Which means, are you dull? And that's what some part of scripture used dull. Are you still there without understanding? Are we there? Do you not yet understand that whatever enter the mark goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mark come from the heart. And those are the things that defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil or evil thought, murders, adulteries, fornication, thief, false witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hand does not defile a man. Are we there? So you'd just boil down to say that we are the deciding factor, not a, another person, not that man. It is what you think to do that you will carry out. Before a man starts stealing or use a gun to kill his fellow human being, he has been thinking over it for long. Mapping a strategy where nobody will be there so that he can kill and run. What happens? What did the person do? What offense did the person commit? It's not a day thought. The thought has been there for long. It is only the word of God that will eliminate all those evil thoughts. That will cause changes. To eliminate it, to cause changes in your life. That is when we say a man should genuinely repent. If you don't repent genuinely, you will still commit sin. If you don't repent genuinely, you will do what? You will commit sin. That's why before, when you employ a pastor here, we call a pastor, say, yes, it's a pastor. You leave him, begin to operate as he like. But now, please, you must pass through foundation class for you to know what the church is all about for you to know whether you fit in or not. Foundation class. When you pass through it, you will know the God we all are serving. So you don't heap any blame on anybody. So nobody will talk you out of your God-given destiny. Praise the Lord. You know, when people become a Christian they make a difference in their life. Think of it when you first become a Christian, somebody push you and drag you, drag you, drag you. All of a sudden, you accept Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior. How do you look like? In that first six months, first from one month to six months, how do you operate? You are bred fearlessly. You don't even operate. you don't even fear whether there is winch. Then what happened now? When you have served for over ten, over ten years, now you are now afraid of demon. Those days, the moment you answer altar call, they say this one is shrine. You say this is no shrine. You must enter there. Take what you want to take. Pray. Say I want to destroy that shrine. The power is, that is in me is greater than the power that is in the world. That is what you'll be saying. Then what makes you now to be fake? To be a changed person, a lazy person, a man without the spirit of, is the spirit disappear from you? No, the spirit is still there. But because we draw back from God, and it's, God cannot draw back from us. God is holding and waiting, watching to see what will become of our action. So it's our action. Yesterday I woke up, I saw some group of people 
what were they doing? They were evangelizing. So after I discussed with the man I went to meet, I went to them. I said, can you give me one of the flyer? Ah, with all pleasure, sir. They gave me one. I said, this is Papa. I said, yes. I said, okay, carry on the assignment. This is good. They are not babies. They are not babies. Adult, men and women. Evangelizing. What are the population of the church there? How many services are they holding? Six services. Still evangelizing. Still doing the work of God. Now you gave your life to Jesus five years ago. You don't become boss. Nobody's up to you. So it's not God, it's you. It's not God, it's you. It's not pastor, it's you. Pastor cannot say it's God. No, it's himself. If anything is happening to me, it's not God. I cannot blame God. I cannot blame member for it. The one I know I'll be able to do, I'll force myself to make sure I do it. I'm not going to receive pay from anybody. I'm going to receive pay from the one that called me God. That is God called each and every one of us from A to Z. As long as you are born into this world, you are in this world, you have a call. What did you use it for? Did you use it to spoil or to scatter or to build? When we become Christian, God makes us a different from inside. He make us a different from where? From inside, not outside. When we change, we repent from following worldly pattern, God make us a different from inside. And once we are different from inside, God will now begin to do what? Begin to bless us. See, if you are different from inside, you will continue the process of change in your life, not one day. The process of your changing continue every day until you get to your goal. There is a set goal by God for you. So it is not going to be automatic that because I become a Christian this year, everything will begin to... No. It takes a gradual process and God will be watching you. He will continue to process your changes from inside, it will continue once you become a Christian. It's not automatic that the blessing has come, no. It will be taking it one step after the other. Just in order to build you, to watch you. We are human beings. We are bound to change any time. There are so many people that God bless. When they turn and say, I'm busy, I'm busy, I don't have time. When I have time, I will come to church. Mm -hmm, it's okay. I'm busy. No, the work is pressing me. Oh, the children, the children are the ones disturbing me. They don't allow me rest. So I have to take care of them. It's all right. So God is watching. It is until we fully give our life and our time to God we will not get his blessings. It's not blessing, but blessings. A song they sang all the time, my lifetime. I will give God my life. My lifetime. I will give God my life. If I give God my life. He will take care of me He will never, never let me down I will give God my life You must give God all your time Everything about you must be given to God and God will now recreate you from inside. God will now deposit himself inside you. 
Did you know how he won the heart of Moses? Because Moses left the, 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 the sheep he was tending to and focused on God. And God entered into him without distraction. Now Moses become a house. And God dwell inside him to go and save the children of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. That was why Pharaoh cannot raise hand against Moses. He will plan, but God will still speak. And Pharaoh's hand will go down. And the same thing applies to you. You know you not that you are God. Have it? The Bible said, it's not a lie. But how many of us will be able to assess God by giving God all his time? Our business, our business. Often on Sunday, so many of them say business. Because I didn't do anything since maybe on Sunday I will sell. Praise God. Matthew chapter 9. Any day you want God in your life, God will come into your life anytime you want God. If you want God today, God is ready to come in. Oh. If you want him tomorrow, he's ready. Any day you want God, God is ever ready to walk with you. If he had walked with Moses, walked with Abraham, walked with Elijah, Elijah, he would also walk with you. Where they asked to open? Matthew 9, verse 20. The Bible says, and suddenly a woman, are we there? And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched him of his garment. That's a situation that was holding that woman. It's a big situation. He has done everything humanly. But nothing. But he sat down and began to meditate. What will I do? I heard this man can heal. I heard this man can transform life. What can I do? Verse 21. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Can, can you see that place? If only let me leave all the medicines they have given to me. Remember, she sold all her belongings. Everything she has was sold in search of cure to flow of blood. But there was no result to it. Now she has to sit down and begin to imagine how will it be? I've heard this man can do miracle. I've heard this man can change situation. Is it not better for me to go? Even if I even if he didn't touch me, let me touch the cloth he's putting on. That's a change of heart. She changed her situation by changing her own heart. So God can change a situation that has been a problem for you for so many years. If you are having a problem and thinking nobody is helping you, God is there for you. God is there for you. If you have that problem thinking, oh, I have no body, I have no sister, I have no father, no mother, I, I'm telling you this morning that God is bigger than your father. He's bigger than your mother. He's bigger than those friends. You don't need to depend on them. Depend on who? On God. God can change situations that have been a problem in your life. He alone can do it. If you sleep, wake up. You don't know what God has done in your life. We are looking down on God, thinking that God is our mate. That's why we are facing a lot of problems. We look at God as, after all, it's not God. 
You can't see God. You can't see him. But he's there with you. That's why if you answer his call, he works with you. The day you fail, he will give you a chance to fumble, finish. But when you go back again to him, he's ready to absorb you, to take you back to himself. Amen. So there is no situation you are passing through today that God is not aware. It only remains on you to change. Come back to him. When you come back to him, he will restate you to your original place in life. The woman of issue of blood, if only I may but touch the hem of his garment, I know my situation will change. And the woman did what? Touch the hem of his garment. And the situation changed. Look at verse 22, where we are ready now. But Jesus turned around. Look at it. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. That's all. Your faith has made you well. It is your faith. If you believe that the situation you are into today will take your life, it's your faith. Oh, no, I don't think I will survive, I will die. <laughs> it's you. Now call your dead to come. Because death is inevitable. Everybody can die. But have you finished what you are here for? No, I don't think I will come out of this sick bed. It's a lie. If you believe in God, God will heal you. If you have no money, God will say Messiah. So it's not money. It is your belief. The woman changed her situation by her thought. It is so it's your thought. If not your thought, it is thought that put us into bondage. Our thought. Because of our desire. Because of what we want. Now we fall into trap of the enemy. Praise the Lord. A man that was leprous. How did he go? He was cured. Remember, leper at those days, just like it we are hearing today. Amen. It is just like it we are hearing today. Others were there, but he made up his mind. I said, no, I think I better cry to this man. He will cure me. He changed his mentality. And decided to be healed, to become clean like every other person. You know, anybody that had it today will be isolated. Yes, anybody that had it today will not eat in the, with the same plate that you are eating. Will not use the same spoon. You wouldn't even want them to sit where you are seated. Even if you pretend. But your heart will not take it. That's exactly what happened to those people that had uh, that are leprous. Let us look at the book of Matthew again, chapter 8, verse 2. Or we can start reading from verse 1. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitude followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing. Did you see that place? Multitude, but that man who knew his condition went to him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make my case a different. If you are willing, I know for sure that we will turn my situation where people are mocking me. I will embrace you and they will come and sing songs of praise with me. I will mix up with people again. Now, look, I'm isolated. Is that what the Bible said here? Yes. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean again. If you are willing. Jesus did not go to him. He was the one that is having trouble. 
He was the one that knew what was happening to him, where he may have gone before, but now he want the only one savior to save him. He went to him and said, Lord, if you are willing, I know you will make my situation better than what it is now. In verse 3, and the Bible says here, then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be what? Be cleansed. Immediately his lepros was cleansed. Straight away. It caused his situation to change. I don't know what you are having that you are holding that thing that God cannot do. I don't know what the problems are that you think God cannot handle. I, I want to let you know, God can never come down from heaven to do it. But he has a medium in which he will perform the work. He has a medium. Man can be a medium. Yes, he has a medium. Money can be a medium. Yes, he has a medium. Water can be a medium. Oil can be a medium. He has a medium. He can never jump down from heaven and say, this is me, I'm God. No. Praise God. I say, praise God. Elisha told the leper, go and wash and be clean. That one got angry. Look at what this man is saying. We have a better river in our place. And I suffered, came down here. He was telling me, instead of here, I thought he would just come and wave his hand. Uh, it's on how God use a house girl a house girl God now enter into the house girl because God want to show the man that he is God otherwise it's not hard for God to go and leave him with his trouble God has spoken through his prophet and the man neglected the word of God so the word of God is another medium that in which you can change, your life can be changed. Go and do it this way. And you say, no, that is not right. That is too cheap. Others demanded money. I built houses for people. I bought cars for people. Now this one says, just go and bath. But bath for what? Is there no water in my place? I have a clean water. I have a swimming pool. Why must it tell me to go to the river to bath? And he was angry and went back home. And he's getting home. The daughter was asking because the daughter was the, one, the house girl was the one that recommended Elisha for him to see the man. So don't you know? Don't you see what this man was saying? How an insult was passing on me. The daughter said, "The girl said, listen. If this man told you to build a whole nation." for him so that you'll be okay, wouldn't you have done it? He didn't request money from you. He did not ask you to go and do something first, or buy a cow, or buy a goat. Just say, go and bath. And if I were you, it's an easy thing, go and bath. And that man does have a second thought, changed his mind again, and went to the river to bath. This is what changes. It's you, not another person. It is you. He changed his mind and went back to the river and bathed on his way, dipped himself into the river seven times. Come out. Seven times and he came out being renewed like a newborn baby's flesh. It is good for us to obey God. It's good. If we cannot obey God, we are the one that is causing trouble for us. Sin is also an incurable disease. Can we go look at that? Sin is one of the incurable diseases. And there is no one among us that have no sin. If you think you have no sin, you lie. Sin is one of the incurable diseases. And we all have it. We all, with no exception. Only Christ healing touch can miraculously take away our sin and restore us to the real living. We, 
But when Jesus came into our life, his healing hand will cause a miraculous healing that will bring us to a real life. Do we repent? We fail to repent. We bluff God. We tell God we are matured, we are big. When you have 10,000 in your pocket, nobody is up to you again. How can we serve God with grudges? How? And every day we say, oh, God is not here. Why will God hear you? When you have a dubious spirit, a wicked spirit inside you. And the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, is that not what the Bible says? We're supposed to be new, but are we new? Are we doing right thing? We're supposed to be doing the right things of God. Are we doing it? Let us be sincere. We lie. We deceive. We practice evil. So sin is one of the incurable diseases, like leper. But when we turn to God, only a hand touch of Jesus we miraculously do what? Heal us. And restore us, bring us back to real living or true living life. If it is until we change our thought. Many of us think that it's just because I come to church. You can't come to church and win God that way. You can't preach and win God that way without you doing it. You must preach and do the word. The people you are preaching to do the word will go to heaven while you are going to hell fire. If you preach and not doing it, you preach because you know the letter. The spirit is not there. For spirit to be there, we must repent. We must repent. We must change. Let us stop deceiving ourselves. Praise God. I say let us stop deceiving who? Ourselves. If we are Christian, we must be the first partakers of our doings. Whether it's right or wrong. One thing I know about God is that when you when you sow or plant orange hmm, and get apple together in the same bush or in the same garden, you cannot go to the apple, apple tree, and get orange. No. You cannot. What you get from orange tree is orange. Grape will be there. You go to grape and, or, and the real orange looks al alike. Tangerine, they look alike. But each tree must bring its own fruit. Each tree must bring its own fruit. If you come now and see that uh, grape is it bringing, uh, what do you call it, apple or tangerine or the real orange, there is something wrong somewhere. There is still something very wrong somewhere. We have to look into this world and see, is God real? Are we doing what we're supposed to do? <laughs> Are we doing what we're supposed to do? Praise God. I said, praise God. Facebook of Samuel. Facebook of Samuel chapter number 15. A popular scripture We're talking about Saul. Mm. If you look at it, Saul excuses come to an end. God wasn't rejecting Saul as a person. No. If Saul understood God very well, he would have seek God forgiveness. But Saul did not realize that God is not a man. 
that God can decide anything at any time. So, mark you, the position you are today may not be yours tomorrow. If you are poor today, tomorrow you may be richer. If you are sick today, take note of it. Tomorrow you may be healing people. All depends on your relationship with God. All depends on your relationship with God. We use Paul as uh, Saul as case study for this very word. Don't ever you think that the place you are today is the final destination. No, you are still going. You may be richer today, but tomorrow become poor. What then is your relationship with God? Is, what, is that what God said concerning your life? No. Then you have to weigh yourself and check your work. Things may not be going well with you today, but your relationship with God is good. God must find to you and take you to a level where people will see yourself a truth. This is God. If not for God, I know how or I know him. He was nobody before, but come and see. That is when your relationship with God is genuine. God can change any situation. Are we there? Verse 13. The Bible said that Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. Are we there? I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What then is this bleating of the sheep in my ears and the, lo and the loyalty of the oxen which I hear? Do you hear that? Good. Now in verse, in verse 15, then Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the bears of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Is that the assignment God gave to you? When God asks you to do something, instead of you doing what God asks you to do, you begin to do a different thing to suit your purpose. And God said, this man is not my candidate. Now, this man is not my candidate. Go and make sure you level Amalekites. Go and level them. Spare no one. You went there to select the beautiful, beautiful, good, good, good looking animals. Good, good looking properties. And bring it back. You say you want to use it to sacrifice for God. Is that what God told you? It's for all of us. It's for all of us. Though this is very, very good for those that call themselves ministers. We are ministers of God. We are believers. Trying to get there. It is what God tells you to do that you will do. Not what you want to do. You are not doing it because of the gain. You are doing it because you are called to do it. If you are doing it because of what you are going to get, you are making a mistake. So Saul went there when God gave him instruction. Go. Level their Amalekites. Make sure no one is spared, including their king. Praise the Lord. Then Saul have excuses. And those excuses come to an end. So God did not reject Saul as a person. He did not reject Saul as a person. Now, if you look at it, Saul did not repent. He was still saying, I went there, I've done this, but I gathered the best with my men so that I will come and sacrifice. Did God need the sacrifice? We'll get there. God did not need the sacrifice. 
than to be the simple word instruction. To be simple instruction is what God told him, but he refused. Verse 15, go back again. And Saul so said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spare the bears of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord our God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Who is that your word? Then Samuel said to Saul, Be quiet. And I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak on. See. Instead of him to fall down and say, I'm sorry. And I will say, Go ahead. Say what God said. Okay. So Samuel said, when you were little in your eyes, in your own eyes, were you, not, were you not the head of the tribe of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. That's what the assignment God gave verse 19. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you, why did you swap down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Why? You see, we use our hand because of our desire to cause problems to our life. We use our hand. God said, you will sell that plot of land that your father gave to you. There. If you enter there, you will die. Abi? God did not say you are going to die for the property your father left. Because I'm a pastor, I will tell you God said, so that you give me the land. <laughs> so, now who will buy the land? No, God said you have to deposit, give it to church. If you like, give it to me. You know, I'm trying to rob you. That is not the will of God. That is covetousness. We are trying to steal. Saul, a case study that if you disobey God, you pay a price. Disobey God today, you will do what? You pay a price. It might not be immediately, but that price you are going to pay will affect your generation if you don't know. Will affect where? Your generation. That's why Jonathan cannot be the next king. Can never be the next king. Assuming he rules well and God finds his spirit in Saul, Jonathan would have been there. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Now, instead of Saul to seek for forgiveness, now, if he had seek for forgiveness, God would have restored him earlier. But I tell you that it is too late to get the kingdom back. It's too late, but God has, God has decided what he wants to do. God has decided it. There is nothing Saul could do again. Now, read verse 24 of that place we are reading now. We are treating. Verse 24. The Bible said, Then Saul said to Samuel, Oh, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your word because I fear the people and obey their voice. Did you see that place? I fear the people and I obey their voice. I remember one time one man came here you are working with pastors. Be afraid of them. Listen to God. Don't listen to co-pastors. You are the one God made the head, not them. If you go to that place, don't you see how other people are doing it? You go there. You get there. You get. I saw this before. They are demon. Everyone has a place of his rest. Demon, Satan, may be their father. Satan did not call me. And God did not call me, go and make money. Say, go and make souls. So why would I be after money? 
John, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. What did the Bible say? If you seek him first, everything in this world will be looking for you. Amen? If you seek God first, everything you need will come to you, including money. So why must I go to one mama or one baba to get a ring, to get a handkerchief, so that I will do like this, you will fall down. And when you fall down, finish, you get back to your house, the problem still remains there. And because people want to hear, he said, they will do like this, people, ah, as you are coming, I will tell you, everything you have done in your house, it's mama and baba that give. That not that there's no, the real prophets of God are, but they don't sell like the prophet that made themselves. They don't sell. They are a pre pre prophet of God, have the fear of God. They have respect for the work. And they have this, the, the fear of the Lord in them. Our late Papa Idahosa Sifai, the man of God, was the name of that their witchcraft meeting, the Laleri. That's what God called it, the Laleri. He said they are not going to hold. I don't know what it means. And he decreed and it come to pass. It's not from the mother. It's not from the father because they own that evil. And they could not hold. The power is still on. Let us obey God. Let us walk with God. If you do not act responsibly with what God has instructed you to do, you will run out of excuses. So better do what God wanted to do. God entrusted a lot into us. Are we doing what God wants us to do? Are we doing it? If we're not doing it, don't ever you forget that a day is coming where we give account of all we have done here. Like all this I'm saying, I will give account. You also will give account of what you hear and you did not work on. So it is not bad for church or churches to stand and say I'm a Christian or member to say I'm a Christian what is your input and what is your contribution you want God to elevate you do you want the work of God to move forward if you seek God God will look for you at the same time and God will bless you praise the Lord conclusion is that one day me, I will give account of what I'm saying today, whether I'm in that class or not. One day, too, you will give account of what you hear that you refuse to do. But don't be like Saul. That will be the throne from your throne. And put another person to replace you when you are alive. Don't be like him. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Numbers chapter number 23. Numbers 23. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter number 23. Numbers 23. And verse 19. Verse 19. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should do what? Should lie. God is not a man. If he has said it, he will do it. It's not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. He has said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? There is no how God will say a thing without bringing it to pass. It is now left to me and you to see that the word of God prevails in our life. Word Liberation Ministries. Liberating the world with the word of God.